Well, piston rings. What's the story with them? Well, the piston rings, they, they sit out against the cylinder bore and they hold the compression in. As, as you get the fire up here, you get this big explosion on here and then this top ring, your first compression ring, it takes most of it and you can see, see the wear in the top there. That's just from years of, years of those explosions. It's a compression ring. You have the gap, say about here with your gudgeon. The second one down, you have the gap at 180. Not quite in line with the gudgeon, just off a little bit. Well, I do anyway, but you just don't want them lined up. And so you can see which ring takes all the, all the force. This one here, the top ring, it's the ring groove in that piston's rooted. So it's just unreal. And then this next one down, it has less movement there. So you can see the difference if I can try and... Ex yeah, you can see the top one has a lot more compared to the bottom one. This next ring down's an oil control ring, as is this bottom one. Now, I believe this engine's had a little bit of dust in it, and that's no problem. Um, we're fixing all that. So, I thought I'd show a couple of ways of getting piston rings off. Now, the old way we used to do it, before we knew any better, was find the gap, pop your fingers in, pop them off like that. Look how thin that ring is. And look, that, that was okay. On the heavy diesels, that got a bit hard. So another way you can do it is take a feeler gauge, perhaps a 10th hour or something like that. And if you push the ring right across, you can often find a little bit of a gap or you can get one end out. So you can put a feeler gauge there Run that feeler gauge around and see that brings it up and it wants to get stuck in the second groove. So you can bring that feeler gauge around once more and you're off. And you haven't stretched that ring. Now, I have in the past also opened a ring up and put a couple of feeler gauges in to slide them past. The top ring's not so bad, but you've got to slide them past these grooves. So that's one way of getting them off. It's not the best way. Um, because you haven't got a controlled pressure all the way around the ring at the one time. Now, this is a set of, look, pretty cheap ring pliers. They don't cost a lot of money. You can see them on eBay. I've seen them on quite a few sites. And, look, the idea of that is they have a, they have a taper in here to catch the ring. So you, to work them, you try and get them to fit in there if you can. These are probably for a bit of a bigger engine, but anyway, that's all right. And then you just open them up, and that gives you a nice even pressure all the way around the ring. So you, know, you can go, you're not, you're not struggling. It's, it's nice and easy to do. Now, if you want to get all flash, I've got this other set here. Now, I believe, is this has it? Now this is blue point, part number PRS10. And how it works, these two little pieces here, they grab the ring and they open it up while this supports the rest of it. So to use that one, these little pieces here support the ring as you're lifting it out. So to use that one, same idea. have even tension around the ring and the ring's supported. Now, I've been a mechanic for years, so I've got some of this fancy, fancy stuff. <laughs> um, if you go with these fellas, that's all right. You can, at times, use a set of circlip pliers. So I'll turn these around. Snap ring pliers sometimes will do. This is just a cheap set. I'm trying to show you things that yeah, you know, where you may have the tools already. 
then you can expand that ring out, support it, and bring it down. I probably need to go slightly bigger with the pliers. And so you can get away with something like that, save you buying extra tools. This is a bigger set of circlip pliers. This isn't ideal, but it might get you there, you know. And it'll bring it down over. This, these aren't quite big enough to... They take the tension off, but they don't support it well enough around the back. But nothing to say you couldn't put something on the end here to, to open it up. So that's what my videos are all about, doing it yourself and, and working out a reasonably cheap way to do it. So once you've got your rings off your piston, um, you can do this at this stage or not. It depends entirely on you. Now, to get the piston rings out, I'll just check if these pliers are going to be small enough. I might use the, I might use the smaller ones. And I'll flick them around again so they go internally like I had them. Now I've got this supported in a vise. Um, I've got aluminium jaws in the vise and, and if you haven't got aluminium jaws just cut a piece of aluminium angle iron for your vise jaws and hang on to your conrod. And I like to hang on to the conrod fairly firm. Um, this piston's just a little bit of movement there. So what I'm doing out the back, I'm going to go around the back of the piston, pop this, pop this circlip out. That didn't quite go as planned, but anyway, that's okay. I don't need to keep it in this instance. And I'll do the same round the back. Well, and I've got a bit of an alloy punch here I've made up for years. And I can come in around the back here. Pop that gudgeon through. And there you go, the piston's off the conrod. Now, I was reading the other day about where you can actually um, um, heat the pistons and just slide that in by fingers. Well, I've never done that, but it, it'll probably be worth, oh, well, it'll be interesting to have a go. But look, that's, that's a quick look at getting the rings off. What I'd like to do here is just show you in in the kits you often get a gudgeon pin bush which is this fella here now if you press that out yourself and press it back in the gudgeon pin won't go in they have to be honed to size and i haven't got the gear to do that i take it to quentin at um at quentin ellis engine and parts and he sets them all up for me but look if if there's no wear there much and, and we'll probably go through measuring this later and put a gudgeon in just to see um, if there's no wear there much just run with them don't be um, don't think you've got to replace everything all the time so we'll I'll pop that up there out of the way now I'd like to I've got a Sparex ring set here for this um, little TEA 20 to 85 mil bore the part number for the standard bore is S41614 and it'll just be an interesting exercise just to show you the ring wear on this machine. So I'll get number one ring out. And if we hold that one there and the number one ring here, And just for the exercise, or just to show you, I'll hang them both on that wire. Now, I'm not sure if you can, how good you can see that. But there's quite a bit of wear there. So, there's a couple of quick measurements we can do. Just And look, this is just out of interest, really. No, no biggie. So, your standard top ring is 3.4 millimeters wide in our case 3.41 roughly this worn one 
2.4. So that's worn 40 thou, which is, you know, um, 0.1 of a mil. So I'll just check that again. 2.43. Three point three three, so it's about a mil forty thou, and that's the difference. And that's why the piston would slide down the bore, and we had no no drag on the piston. Now, an interesting thing for that, or an interesting display, would be if I put a piston liner up in the vice here. And I'll try and open the vise so I'm on the two flats here. And I'll drop the camera down a little bit for you. And that's where I'd like to be. Somewhere around there where you can see right down the bore. And I'll try not to dump this on the ground. So we'll clean this old ring up. We'll put the ring in here. There's no tension there at all. And if we look at the ring gap there, can you see, look at that. That is huge. Now, I haven't got enough vernier, enough um, um, feeler gauges to, to check that. So we'll just run this in. Just Look, this is just out of interest. So we've got 9 millimetres ring cap. <laughs> That's just incredible. Okay, now let's compare that with a new piston ring. And we'll slide the piston ring in here. And the idea is to have it even all the way around. So I'll we'll just poke the vernier out a little bit and just run it. Run it all the way around. So we know that ring is square to the bore now. And where's the ring gap? Can you see it? I'm going to have to mark it. It's just there. You can just see it in that shot there. <laughs> just incredible the wear in this engine, isn't it? I enjoy that. So, I'll just check that and just see what it is out of interest. I don't think I've written this down yet. I'll have to go and have a look. That's 15 thou. Oh. That's a little bit tight. It does go, but it's a little bit tight. So I'll see if I've written that down yet, but that's the difference. And I'll go back through my sheet here, see if I've begin ring gap, 10 to 15 thou. So, that there, I'll just get our old piston and just push that in a bit, and just to see. And, like this is for new rings, so we'll just have a look. You should check this on all, all your rings. There's 16, 13. We'll go back to 13 and try that. Where's my 14 gone? 
No, that little set doesn't have one. I'll see if I've got one on here. I'll have one on here for sure if I can read them. Must be time I bought some new ones. No, I'm going to have to. I've got one here, I just can't read it. I'm just seeing if this set would have it. There's a 14 there. That goes in. That doesn't. So 14 goes in, 15 doesn't. So we're calling that 14 there. That's probably on the uh, on the open side a little bit. Um, what do we got? Yeah, 10 to 15 there. Now, um, if that was tighter than 10, as things heat up, that ring gap gets smaller and smaller and smaller. So at 15, 14 there now, that gets smaller when you run it. But still, it's um. 10 to 15 is the, the spec for a new ring, and we're 14, so we're just in spec. I wouldn't mind if that was down the bottom side, but that's just how it is. Not much we can do about that. So, yeah, look, that's just a quick little chat about rings. All these rings, you, in the Sparex kit, you get the rings in a, in a thing like this, and number one ring goes to the top. It's got them, oops, sorry. It's got a marked here which groove it goes into and you probably haven't got five ring grooves. The new pistons may have an extra one in. I haven't even pulled one out of the box yet for a look. But anyway, that's just a little chat about piston rings. Well, I was going to end that video there, but then <laughs> it got me thinking. So we're back up, got the camera turned on and we're into it. So if you recall, I showed you the ring set and it has five rings on it. So I thought, well, I'll go and grab the, grab the piston and have a look. And there's your new Sparex piston. It has got five ring grooves on it. So they've gone from two compression rings to three compression rings and then the two oil rings like we had on the other one. Now, the oil rings are cast. That's a nice cast one. I like them. And... The bottom one is cast too. You do have these cord rings that are in bits and pieces. Now look, they're okay. Some kits have them, some don't. They, they still seem to work well. But I was just very pleased with this kit um, to have the extra compression ring there. Um, with the rings being at 15th hour, or 14th hour, sorry, ring gap when it maximum's 15, I, I would have liked to see that ring gap a bit tighter to be honest. But with this extra compression ring groove here, well, that's going to bring us right in. And another thing I could have shown you before that I didn't is when you put a new ring in, you can see there's just no movement there. So that other old, that other old <laughs> piston, it was quite worn. So like that, I just thought I'd show you that that's an interesting thing. And while I was over there, I opening the piston kit, the piston kit comes with a gudgeon in it, so you get a new gudgeon, new circlips, and a new piston in the piston kit, and we'll give you the number of that a little bit later, I, I just forgot to get it. And what we're looking for in these standard gudgeon bushes, this is a brand new pin, this is a brand new pin that came with the piston. So, we just have to check that there's no major movement in there. And what I'll do, I'll just set this dial gauge up. Turn it on. Okay, you can see that. Okay, so I'll zero it. Oh, 
That's with it pulled right down, evenly on both sides. I just adjusted the vice and it changed. <laughs> Bloody thing. Okay, we'll zero it, holding it down. It's a bit fiddly, this little jigger. Okay, we've got half a fair. Then we go up. See if I can rock it. I can rock it too fair. But when we come... So now we... <laughs> I need to set this up a little bit better, I believe. So right up we're at zero, right down, nice and even, we're at one. So we've got one thou wear in that bush. Um, I'm not sure the setting, I'll find out, but look, I'm not going to replace them, I'm happy with that. Um, I believe that's a good figure. Um, one thou, you know, it's a splash feed thing. And I, that two thou, you know, when you rock it side to side, I can barely... Oh, I suppose I can feel it if I have a good look. But when you go straight up, straight down, that's where the force is, straight up and straight down. If you go left to right, up and down, um, if we measured here and pushed and pulled, you'd probably find that there wouldn't be as much wear because as the explosion on top of the piston pushes down, the worn bit is often down here. And that gives you a chance. That's where the oil's fed into. There's an oil hole comes from your bearing journal up to here. And that's something you've got to make sure the bearing's right later. So it does get an oil feed. But, yeah, look, I'm happy with that. I'm not going to replace the gudgeon bushes. We're going to use them.